Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Humankind. So we're starting out looking at our stone rings that we just built. This is our holy site. The other holy site that you'd get if you went with the other religion choice, the polytheism, uh, you know, having multiple gods, is the obelisk of the gods. And, I don't know, I probably prefer that one over this one. They're both pretty cool though. So before we push the end turn button, I did want to address something from the previous videos that a few people have asked about, and that is in regards to, to putting our city here. Uh, you know, some people are curious why I was so set on, on getting uh, this location. It wasn't just about the gemstones. Uh, it was more than anything just trying to expand into territory that would soon be taken by somebody else. Uh, so like all the other territory that's around us here, you know, all of around this way, this isn't really under threat of somebody else taking, so we could probably take this later in the game. Uh, this here, there are some concerns. We do want to kind of grab this up, which, you know, we tried to grab this to, to stop them. Uh, but really, you got the independent peoples down here, so I'm not really worried about this either. Uh, this is the area that would get snatched up by the Assyrians, although I don't think they're called Assyrians anymore. They're Persians, so they'd be snatched up by the Persians uh, as well as some of the other uh, countries in the game here. All this would likely be taken by them, so that's really why I was focusing on this area first, is just to get it. Uh, before somebody else did. Now in regards to me turning Thebes into a city here, even though I didn't really like the location, which again the location, there's nothing wrong with this location, there's nothing that's not optimum about this particular territory, uh, it's just that it's not very defensive. Uh, it would be really easy for them to kind of march in here and take this from us. I'd prefer it to be up like on a hill or, or just anywhere better for the siege anyways. Uh, where it'd be a little bit more difficult for them to siege it. Well, other than the defensive reasons, there's nothing wrong with this location here. Uh, so I, I'm fine with it, but remember that this is not civilization and things in this game are not as static as they are in civilization. You build a city in civilization, that's your city and that's your city forever. And there's not really anything to do about it unless somebody takes it and, and destroys it. In this game, that is not the case. Now, while you can't destroy a city, uh, we will never be able to just get rid of the city in here. There is a feature that will become available in the Middle Ages in the tech tree once you get a certain tech uh, that allows you to absorb cities. Uh, so take one city and then have it absorbed by another city. So the location that I wanted to turn into a city uh, for this area was this one right here. And so what we could do is detach it from this city and then make it into its own city and then have it absorb thieves later in the game. That would be a perfect option for us and might very well be what we end up doing. Now some of you may be thinking this is suboptimal because you're over here building all these these uh, you know buildings, infrastructure and stuff in Thebes uh, and then you're going to destroy the city and those buildings aren't going to move over to this one. So you're going to have a, a, a new city that has nothing uh, and you're having to absorb a city that has a bunch of buildings. But again, this is, is not civilization, uh, this is not, that's not how it would work in this game. Because in this game there are technologies that allow new cities to get like all the buildings of a certain era. Uh, so there's like a, you know, buildings level 1, buildings level 2, buildings level 3, whatever. And you'll start that city out with all the buildings, which can result in new cities sometimes being better than old cities. Now they won't have all the districts unless you've been building districts there. Uh, you know, with your, your other city. Uh, so they won't have the districts, but they'll have all the buildings constructed in them, and they'll also start out with like some extra population too. So sometimes newer cities can actually be just as good as, as older cities, uh, just because they have all the buildings, which you might not have been able to construct in your older cities yet because you're building other things, units or, or districts or whatever. Uh, they just wouldn't have the districts. And so this city, when we made it into one, could end up being better than this one, and then when it absorbs it, all the population from Thebes would go into here, so you're not even losing the population. And then for the districts that you built, like say the pyramids here, you're still utilizing those. Those still get worked. You know, when you build districts over here in this territory, uh, we still get to, to work those. Uh, so we're not really losing much of anything, frankly. Uh, there's not really anything that we're, we're gonna lose outside of uh, yeah, I guess there's really nothing other than, the, I guess, the production you spent to, to build the cities, but that was this city's production. So, I mean, there's there's really not much lost by doing that and absorbing it. Uh, I can't really think of anything anyways, other than the fact that this would be the new city and it wouldn't have any districts yet, unless we had built them. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a perfect option for us, and, and most likely what we'll do, just because I like the, the locations of this uh, particular uh, outpost better than this one. So yeah, we'll probably just wait to the Middle Ages and then turn it into a new city and, and get all the buildings and then have it absorb Thebes. Uh, so it, it's just not as static as civilization. There's a lot more options available. Uh, but the second thing is that we didn't need to turn this into a city 
to avoid losing it to the to the Persians. So it told us that we had one turn left until the city would be influenced by the Assyrians or, or now the Persians. And I just assumed, because I've never had it happen before because I never let it happen, uh, as soon as I see that, I, I do something to stop it. And so I never actually had, you know, the, the, the numbers count down to see what would happen if, if we didn't do anything about it. And it doesn't actually flip it over. In fact, it does something that I, I knew about but didn't know why it was happening. Uh, what it does is it gives them a grievance uh, to try and get control of that city. And I had gotten notifications about this and grievances in my past playthroughs uh, where I'd get a grievance uh, because, you know, like they're mistreating the faithful or whatever, or they're mistreating my people in one of their other cities, which gives me a grievance, which I can then demand to try and take that city in a war. And I didn't know why I was getting that. I was assuming it had to do with their policies because there's like a policy on how you treat, you know, the people of other religions and stuff. And so I thought that's what that was based on, but it is not based on that. When they get the influence over your city, whether it's through the influence or the, the faithful, you know, we go through here, you know, if they do it through this way, using faith, that's how they get that grievance. So that's how I've been getting those grievances and past ones. And you actually see that in here in the crisis, Whoever you are. she has the oppressing the faithful one. Uh, so yeah, I'd always gotten that before, but I didn't know exactly why I was getting it. And, and that is why it's just because your, your faith influences that, that city. So I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so it wouldn't have flipped over to us uh, or over to her. So we didn't need to turn that into a city. Uh, we are going to make this demand. This is because she trespassed in our territory. And so we're going to demand 400 gold here. Demand for so yeah, we're going to make that demand. Looks like we also had like a trade route blocked as well. Yeah, from from violence. Okay, we're not at war with her or anything like that. Okay, so yeah, just got some demands out there with the Persians. Could very well see some, some conflict uh, between the two of us. Uh, right now we're at peace, though. We just have some grievances against each other. So we'll see what happens there. So that would not have flipped to her, to, over to her, so there was no reason for me to have to turn that into a city. But it's fine. It is letting us get stuff built here. Uh, and again, this isn't a, the, the worst location uh, for a city. It's just not very defensive. Uh, but let's go ahead and end our turn, and then we're going to talk about the second thing. That I've been wanting to talk about, but we haven't had the chance yet because we haven't had this opportunity available to us. But we will very soon. You need 250 influence for it, and that is the wonder system, guys, which does work quite a bit different than civilization's wonders. Now they are similar in the sense that you know only one person can build the wonder or can have the wonder, can only have one wonder across the entire world. Uh, so it's similar in that stance. Uh, it's also similar in the fact, and here's our, our new wonder can be claimed. It's also similar in the fact that wonders give you some unique bonuses that can be quite powerful. You intrigue. But outside of those similarities and, and the fact that you build them on the map, there's a very, very different system for the wonders. So in order to access this, uh, you also can just use that notification and then it'll take you over to here. Uh, but outside of the notification, the way to access this is to click on All Cities and Outposts and then click on Show Unc Unclaimed Wonders, and that will give you access to all the available wonders. So the way it works is there's four wonders for each age. Now, the reason why we haven't looked at this yet is because we were a little bit late going into the, the Ancient Age. Uh, we were in the middle, I guess. But these had already been claimed by the time that we would have had any influence to do it. And so we weren't able to, to claim any of the wonders, which is unfortunate because some of these are pretty good. Uh, one of my favorites from this period is the Temple of Artemis, which gives you a 10 plus health regeneration in all your units. And that's everywhere that your units can heal, uh, not just in the, the location of the, the wonder. And so your units are going to heal 50% faster, uh, basically, since uh, they heal by plus 20 uh, by default. Uh, so that's a, a much faster heal rate. And on top of that, your units will ignore movement penalties from forest. Uh, so I really like this one. It was a bummer that none of these were available to us because we just didn't get into the to the age quick enough. And this is one thing to consider when you're trying to decide if you should you know, go to the next age or if you should stay in your current age to earn more stars. If you go to the next age first, then you might get uh, a better selection of wonders. Uh, so we did not get to, to pick a wonder in the ancient age. However, there is a bonus to that because uh, the way that you claim wonders is through influence and it gets more expensive based on how many wonders you have claimed so far. So you'll notice that none of these countries have gotten a wonder yet because it's more expensive for them to claim it based on influence. Uh, so you'll see that this is a very different system 
than civilizations. You know, civilizations is based on, mostly on tech and production. So you got to get the technology in order to unlock the wonder in order to build it. And then you got to have enough production to build it first because it's a race because some other nation might have already gotten uh, access to the wonder and so they're building it. So you're trying to build it first. So whoever has the highest technology and the highest production, those are the people that are going to be able to claim wonders. In this game, it is not based on that at all. It's based pretty much only on influence. And this is one of the reasons that I mentioned earlier in the series why technology, while still very important, is not as important as it is in the Civilization series. And that's because wonders are not tied to technology. Uh, because it is tied to the age. Uh, you know, you got to get to the next age to unlock the wonders. But remember, you can go through the ages without, you know, getting any of the technology stars. You could just have, like, a really large empire with a lot of districts and a lot of population or whatever. And that's how you're getting, getting your stars. So you might be really low on tech and still have access to these wonders since they have nothing to do with technology, really. Uh, so it's a very different system uh, from the Civilization series. And again, it is tied to that influence and gets more expensive with the more wonders you've had. So we have four choices here. Uh, the Colossus of Rhodes is actually my favorite from the Classical Age, and it's already been snatched up, unfortunately. Uh, so if we had gotten to this age a little bit quicker, then we could have gotten access to this. Uh, and the reason why I like this one so much is because militia are not lost over time during sieges. When you do a siege, uh, there'll be like militia units that rise up to defend the city. Uh, how good those militia units are is based off your technology. Uh, you'll get better ones through time. And how many you have will be based off of like the defenses in the building, I believe. I think that's what it's based off of, is how many, uh, you know, like how good the walls are and stuff. And so what happens is those units rise up to defend it along with any other units that you may have in the city uh, that you set up to, to defend that, to garrison it. And the sieges are more like total war than they are like civilization. Uh, so it's, you'll set up a siege and then you'll start building up... Uh, different siege engines that you may have unlocked through the technology and that's the only way to get siege engines is while doing a siege which is more accurate historically uh, they didn't typically you know build siege engines and haul them around uh, usually they would build them you know during the siege that was uh, what happened more often and so it makes more sense than civilization where you're building all these catapults or trebuchets or whatever uh, and bringing them with your armies uh, so you build them during the siege and while you're building them, which takes time, it takes a certain amount of time uh, turns to build them, uh, while you're, you're doing that, uh, the units that are inside the city are being starved out. Uh, so you can actually take uh, a city by just starving it out, as you could historically. In fact, most sieges would end because of uh, starving out the, the defenders. And so you can do that in this game. You can starve out the defenders. The militia will slowly die as the siege progresses. However, this Colossus of Rhodes stops that from happening. So whoever has it, you cannot starve out their militia, which is an incredibly powerful bonus that lasts for the entire game. Uh, the 20 plus stability and 100 plus fame, all of the wonders grant that. So there's no uh, difference there. This is the main benefit here. If we looked at the Lighthouse of Alexandria, since we're going to buy one of these, since we just now have the influence, we're not going to get this one. Uh, it gives that 20 plus stability and 100 plus flame like they all do. So the main bonus here is you're getting a plus 5 vision range. And then your naval units are going to have slightly increased combat strength and a little bit more speed. It is helpful if it's going to be a naval focus campaign, which I don't know if this will be. It might. I don't know. But it wouldn't help us right now because we don't have any naval units. And also, I really want to build our first wonder in our home territory, our capital territory. Not just the, the territories that are connected to it, but the capital territory, which... We don't really have very many options because this has to be built in a coastal territory. Uh, so we really don't have very many options here because I don't think you can do it on the reefs. And so there's only two locations here. And so I would prefer to get something else. And besides, again, it doesn't really help us that much. So that leaves us with two choices. The Mausoleum at Halicarna Halicarnassus. Uh, and that gives you plus 1% science per district on city or outpost. And this really isn't that significant of a bonus. Uh, you'll get buildings later in game that gives a city like a 10% bonus. And it, just to look at, at Cairo as an example, they have two districts attached to them. Uh, so a total of three districts. That means we get a 3% science bonus, uh, which is really not that great, honestly, for a wonder. Uh, yeah, I think this is kind of one of the... It probably is the worst of this age, I think. And you'll get that in all your cities, I believe. I, I think it's it's not just for, for Cairo, for building that there. I think it's anywhere. Uh, so it helps. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's not very significant. So the last choice would be the Statue of Zeus. This gives us uh, plus 20 faith, which is something we've been having issues with. 
it actually gives plus 40 stability, so you're getting plus 20 that you normally get, and then you're also getting an additional 20, and then you get a plus 10 stability on city or outpost. So that'll be for, for all your cities, we'll get a plus 10 stability. So the capital where we built this here would get a plus 50 stability, which is quite a bit. You're also gonna get plus 5% money per alliance on empire, so every alliance we have would give us plus 5% money. Uh, we don't have any alliances, so it doesn't help us. Uh, but I think this is the best one. Uh, we could really use the stability and the faith would be really nice as well. And most importantly, we're playing as the Greeks, so it makes sense to get the Statue of Zeus. So we're gonna go ahead and claim this. And then the way it works is once you claim the wonder, nobody else can build that wonder. Uh, so nobody else can build uh, the, the Statue of Zeus now because we have, have claimed it. However, we cannot claim another wonder until after we finish constructing that one. Uh, so we'll want to get that started so that, you know, if we get enough influence, we could we could claim a wonder whenever that opportunity is, is available. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that uh, the influence is now 450 to claim another wonder. So it's getting a lot more expensive. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it now. I just want to show how wonders work. And it looks like we got an offer here and we're going to do the same thing we did before. This is about the uh, trading the strategic goods and we're just going to counter and ask for money if she wants them. That way we're not angry in her because she's the one that's that's turning it down right now. All right, so the uh, capital city Cairo here has built the Spearman and we're going to go and have them go probably right down here, I think. Yeah, we're going to start moving down here because the next objective will be to attack those independent peoples. Uh, this army is going to do that as soon as they finish up this area. Uh, so with this unit here, we're going to... I want to get the outpost set up, but you know what? Let's get rid of these guys here. Let's destroy them. I think they've hired them. Yeah, these are our mercenaries that they've hired. I think it's them, right? Yeah. So they hired their units. And so this is, is going to help us no matter what. Uh, we're both enemies with him and we're enemies with them. So we definitely want to fight these guys. So let's go and move over here. And then we'll attack them. This is a fantastic location for us. It's going to work out very well. Uh, and we're stronger than them. Okay, so I assume they'll probably be set up back here on these hills. Or on that hill. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want the scouts over here. This gives them high ground and a forest bonus. Uh, we're going to want the spearmen down here covering this so that when the chariots attack them, they'll get both the high ground bonus and the bonus against the chariots because they're good against uh, their anti-cavalry unit. We're going to put the warriors up here. They'll get the forest bonus and the, the high bonus. And then we're going to put the archers right here, which cannot be attacked because this is a cliff. And they'll get the, the height bonus and uh, they can should be able to shoot. I'm not sure how, how far their range is here. Three, so they should be able to shoot anywhere on the battlefield here. All right, so let's go to end our deployment. It should work out really well for us. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and strike at the, the chariots first because they're the more powerful of the two units. He has a warrior and a chariot unit. No fear. So we're going to shoot at him. Unfortunately, we didn't do very much damage. Uh, that was the low end of what we could have done, so that was that didn't work out well for us. And then rather than give up our defensive position here, we're going to end the round. And I'm just going to hope that the AI does what it always does. Even when they're on the defense, they still attack. Yep. Yeah, they always attack. So he attacked here, took a lot more damage because we had the high ground. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and hit... Rather than strike the chariots, let's go ahead and shoot at the warriors here. All together. Just to weaken them. And then let's attack them from our high ground. There you go, beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and end the round. They should attack again, which will result in their destruction. And then the hope is that the chariots will then move in here and attack next. Where, yeah, that will not work out well for them because those are our spearmen. So they're gonna take very heavy damage here. Yeah, negative 32. And this is the last turn, but we should be able to end it here, guys. So we'll hit him with the archer. Let's hope for high damage. You got mid-range. That's not terrible. And then we're going to charge him with the spearmen. Uh, look at that combat strength. 31, you know, being anti-cavalry. They have the high ground, and then they have the friendly units. Very good. Uh, that was very good random bonuses, or, you know, damage there. That worked out well for us. And then we'll finish him up here using the, uh, the warriors. Although we could come with this, 
you know what? Actually, let's go over here and grab this just in case it doesn't work. Or I guess he can do that. Yeah, we'll attack him here with the the warriors. Yeah, I was gonna say if we didn't destroy him, we want to make sure we have the flag so we don't lose this. Yep, that's what ended up happening. Uh, so let's go ahead and have these guys go ahead and seize control of that flag, and they might be able to attack here. Yeah, they can. So we'll be able to finish them off. All right, so everybody got engaged in combat in this battle. All right, so we achieved a victory, destroyed these two units here, and we have, you know, affected the total war support of both of us. So they're gonna lose war support uh, because of the fact they lost that battle while we're gonna increase our own war support. Very, very important when you go to war, that war support mechanic. All right, so that's the end of their turn. Uh, Cairo, remember, just finished building up that Spearman. Uh, so now we're going to have him work on the Statue of Zeus because it's incredibly important that we get that here. Although we have not yet got the Amphitheater, so that's something to consider. We might want to grab that up first just because you can build it a lot quicker. It's only three turns. Another thing to uh, talk about when it comes to Wonders is shared projects. Uh, so there are several different types of things that are shared projects. For instance, that Holy Site was considered a shared project. Shared projects can be worked on by multiple cities, and they'll they'll all you know put their production towards getting it done. Uh, so that's a very helpful mechanic. Uh, so with the uh, the amphitheater, we have to figure out where we want to build this. They're saying this is the best location here, and, and I suppose we can do that. We don't really have a very good like research location uh, here in our capital. Yeah, I don't think there's any uh, good uh, research locations where we're going to get a lot of science. Because these do not grant science, I don't think. Yeah, these are the money production ones. Some of the the goods do have science bonuses. You know, copper might. I'm not entirely sure. Let me check. Yeah, copper has it. So building like uh, the, the research districts here would be helpful because you'd get that extra science bonus. So yeah, I think we're just going to build it here just because it would look nice. You know, we have all of our... Uh, uh, have all of our unique districts up here around the capital. Yeah, I think that's the way we'll do it. Yeah, so we'll build right here just because it's plus 14. It's the best location. That's going to give us a lot more science. That's going to increase the science quite a bit, actually. So we'll get that done in, in four turns. Let's go ahead and end our turn. And the Zhao forgave one of our grievances, the oppressing of the faithful. Ransack. See the sights. Appreciate the local culture and take anything that's not nailed okay. Down. So what happened here is that they are currently ransacking the administrative center. Uh, that's what we did to to them over here. And if they did that, uh, then you know we'd lose control of this. Uh, so we want to stop that. Now they have seven turns before they complete it, so we got a lot of time. And that's what I think we're going to do. Is let's have the only unit that didn't get injured come over here and set up the the outpost here. Well, the rest of these guys, the rest of these guys will get into our own territory so they can start healing up. So remember, we set up the district, the outpost there. So we'll do it here again. Although it is now letting us know what the best district is. It's saying that one's the best one. And it is a lot better. You're getting 26 total compared to what we were getting here before, which was 21. However, that's all extra production. And we can build production districts down here and take advantage of that. So let's let's get the food, guys. We really need the food here. So let's get that outpost set up again. Uh, it's unfortunate we had to use influence for that because I, I really want to grab these horses over here. Uh, let's go ahead and get these guys moving into our own territory. Uh, let me see what their combat strength is just in case they decide to stop that and attack us. We're good to go. So what we're going to do is just get into our own territory. And you'll see we're starting to heal immediately because, again, you don't have to uh, just sit still. In order to heal uh, so we're gonna go right here we're gonna need to find actually we'll need to find a good place to attack them from a good direction uh, when you do this you can see where you'll be able to deploy and you see that that is obviously not the best location for us to deploy from we'd probably want to deploy from up here in fact maybe even like so to get that high ground for our archers uh, when we when we deploy yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do this here. We'd want to attack from right there. So let's go to move over here. Just kind of plan that out. And uh, we're going to have our spearmen come down this way. 
Now, I know that there's two archers. Oh, okay, these are the two archers. Okay. I wasn't sure where those were at. That's them right there. So we should be safe to start moving down here. And I, I, I won't be able to do anything without more troops, of course. We need this army to come help. Uh, let's go ahead and end our turn. And we did finish up our research of masonry. All right, awesome. Now we can use forced labor. I don't typically use that. Again, that just allows you to sacrifice population to get something built quicker. So I think what we're going to want to do next is organize warfare. Yeah, I think that would make the most sense for us because we got to get to standing armies over here to get our special unit. Although that's actually already available. Now I do want the battering ram for when we attack that city. But standing army I think is a little bit more important. So let's go and take that off and uh, do the standing army next. Uh, that'll be 10 turns to get it done. It's going to take a while. That's okay. Just a little notification that we're still being ransacked here. All right, so this army has healed up a bit, but they're not quite there yet. And remember, we're wanting to attack from right here. So let's go ahead and start moving over that way. Now we're going to want our archers. So maybe that's one thing we want to consider. How much influence do we need to grab control of this? Let's just take a look here. So we're going to need 70 influence. So we would not have enough next turn. We'll be able to get until two turns, and then we'll be able to build that. So it'll be three turns before we can upgrade these archers. And we have six turns before they take that. Okay. So let's move the archers in. We're going to move them all together, guys. We're going to give them some time. It's fine. We're going to take our time with this and make sure that uh, we're fully healed up and, and prepared. As far as where we're going to set this up, we can't really look yet. And we know we're not going to set up on the horses, so we can go move right here. And then just kind of skip our turn until we figure out where we, we want to set that up. Uh, these guys will skip their turn as well for now. And we can see some units coming in here. They have 44 strength compared to our 18 strength. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sit here uh, so they can't attack our stuff. And so yeah, if they want to, to attack us, they're going to have to attack this unit here up on the hill. And yeah, we'll just kind of protect. Maybe go... I suppose this is fine. We'll stay right here. Uh, because... We do not want them coming into our territory. Uh, this spearman would not be able to do it on its lonesome, uh, so we can't attack them. We'll have to let them attack us. Now, we would get both the hill bonus, as long as they didn't come up this way. Uh, we get the hill bonus, and we'd get the fact that we're anti cavalry so that'd help, but it's still not enough, I don't think, to beat two of them. Alright, so let's figure out what we want to get here. And get more science and influence with the amphitheater there, which might be what we want to get. Don't have enough population, I think, to justify getting a unit right now. We did get the buildings constructed, right? Yeah, we have the, uh, excuse me, the walls. We have the walls constructed. All right, so that's good. Now, I think we are going to go ahead and get this, guys. Uh, we always need more science, and the unique districts are just helpful to have. Uh, though, I'm not psyched on the locations where this can be built, frankly. But you know what? This might not be a, a science-heavy location anyways. So I think we'll just put it here. That's where we're going to get the best uh, science bonus. So we'll just put it right here. I hate that all of our unique districts are right up here on the borders with them. But, but yeah, we want to get that for the influence. It's always helpful. Uh, Persians feel differently about us. And they did end up attacking us there. So we are considered significantly weaker. Our 18 strength, it just does not compare to, to you know the 44 strength that they have. Now remember his anti-cav bonus only gives him 4 plus combat strength, with it, which would move him up to 22, which is exactly what they are. So he's outnumbered two to one. There's very little chance of him winning. Even with the height bonus, he's still gonna lose. But one thing to think about is we don't know which way he's gonna retreat to. We don't know where he's gonna retreat to. And so if we don't fight this, they could just attack us again and we won't have a retreat choice and that position could be significantly worse than what this position is guys so you know what we're gonna fight it in the hope that we can kill just one of them uh, I know that we'll lose the unit uh, but it is what it is guys let's just see with the goal here of killing one unit if we can make that happen so here's our flag uh, there's also the question if they can beat us in three turns I don't know if they can uh, we'll have to see uh, so let's go ahead and end our deployments Remember, they got to attack us. They're going to come over here, so we won't get the height bonus, but the other unit would not be able to do that. So we did 20, or we took 24. I think they took more. I didn't see the number there. 
And then this unit's gonna come over here and attack from below. And thus he should, should take a lot more damage. Yeah, 19 to 45. Not bad at all. Now, we could sit on the defense here. And make them attack us, which would make it less likely that they would win in the three turns. But I think they're going to win in the three turns no matter what, guys. So I kind of feel like it would be better to, to make sure that this unit gets destroyed. Since that's our real goal here, is to destroy them. So let's hope that we only take like five damage and that they take 50 damage. No we'll have to see how it works. We took 19. They did take 50, so they're almost destroyed. Uh, these guys will attack from over here. Doing a lot of damage. They'll come up over here. Uh, we did more than they did. Uh, they'll come over here and they'll attack us. You know, no longer will we have the height bonus. So I'm glad we did attack them. And this should destroy them. And thus we only have a little bit of health left. There's no way to run or get away from this, guys. Uh, we're just going to end our turn and let them attack us. We do have stronger strength than them, but they have more health. So we will lose this. But we killed one of their units, which was the goal here. Uh, I wanted to get one unit destroyed. And not only did we destroy one unit, but we did a lot of damage to the other one. He is incredibly weak. All right, so not bad. It could have been much worse than that. All right, so let's go ahead and have these guys merge into... This unit here and we don't yet have the influence do we wasn't it like 70 is what we needed yeah uh, one more turn to get the influence there all right so let's just go and have them skip the turn for now and it looks like Cairo did finish up the construction uh, so we're gonna need to get another unit to deal with those guys there and we'll do the spearman uh, as far as our growth we're actually losing food right now so, you know, using a population unit to uh, get rid of this issue it will be helpful. Uh, but we do need to get more of our farmer's quarters constructed. We just have so much stuff we want to do right now. Uh, let's go ahead and end turn. Uh, Nubians have reached the ancient area and decided to keep their culture. And the Persians have declared war on us. Okay, so not really surprising. Uh, we've been causing issues with them for some time. So I'm not all that surprised to see them attacking us. Uh, remember, they were trading with us more than that we were trading with them. And thus, this is going to hit their economy kind of hard. Now, they're going to attack us here. Uh, they're more than likely going to wait to attack. Uh, here's the, the levies I told you guys about that respond. Uh, they do have a much stronger attack power than we do. And will continue to get weaker as it goes, as time goes on here. And I don't know if they have decided to just straight up attack us or if they're going to wait. It looks like they're going to go ahead and attack us. Now, one thing to consider is that we have the we do have the walls here. Uh, so that makes these units stronger than they would seem. But overall, we have no chance here uh, just because they have so many units. And their archers will be able to shoot at them, uh, shoot at our units from behind the, uh, the walls. Now, the way these sieges work is their archers will be able to shoot at us uh, even behind the walls. Uh, but we will get a defensive bonus being behind the walls. Uh, the cav unit will not be able to attack us at all as long as we stay behind the walls. Uh, they can't get behind them. So we don't have to worry about that unit. He's essentially worthless. Uh, really, all we have to worry about is the archer and the uh, two warriors here. Uh, the two warriors can scale the walls. We will get a defensive bonus, but they'll still be stronger than us. So we're definitely going to lose here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and I think we, we only have enough walls here as well to... Let me just double check. Yeah, we have three units. And we only have enough walls to put two of them behind there. So one of them is going to have to go over here and then move back and then move in once those units get destroyed. Yeah, that's probably the way we'll have to do it. So yeah, we're definitely going to lose there. Um, but we can kill quite a few of them. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot of combat going. I knew that we would. Uh, this is not surprising at all. I figured we'd have... This is going to be a very uh, combat-heavy campaign, which is exciting. So as far as where we want to build here, they're saying this is the best location because of all those forest. It's uh, not a bad location when it comes to defense either, although I might want to go up here instead. Yeah, I think that would probably be a better place. Even if you do lose a couple production for the start. Now, we're not getting any food over there, though, so that's something to consider. Now, we do have a, a province that you know is going to get us more food uh, if we attach this to, to Cairo. So that's not that big of an issue. So yeah, I think we will end up putting them right up here instead. That will take two turns to get, which means 
I don't know if we're gonna want to wait to rank them up considering the fact that we're at war right now. So I was gonna boom over there. But yeah, I was gonna to wait to attack with the archers here or with this unit here until after we were able to level up the archers once we got the horses. Uh, but that's gonna take two turns for him to get that set up, and then you gotta wait for the outpost to get set up, and then you gotta set up the, the actual deposit. So we're not waiting, guys. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and attack. Uh, remember, we wanna attack from this point, so it'll be two turns, I think, maybe even three. Uh, we're already in the area. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we went into their, their interaction area. And I really feel like we ought to go ahead and just fight this immediately, since we have a, a battle going on over here, and we're gonna wanna, we're gonna have to go take back our city while they're weak before they heal up. So let's go ahead and uh, get all of our units deployed here. We're going to do the manual battle. Uh, the archer we want right there. I guess right here is fine too. He can't attack us from right there. Uh, we're going to want to stay on these high grounds here. Though there is a river here. But it has a forest bonus. I don't remember how the two compare. I know rivers, river penalty is pretty bad. But you know what? They'll get a river penalty no matter where they go. Uh, there's a river here, river here. So no matter what, they'll have a river penalty. So you know what, the river penalty will probably be fine. It'll be offset. And they have archers. So you know what, they're actually not gonna attack us at all. I didn't think about that fact. It's just two archer units, so we need to attack them. Okay, so being on high ground like we did last time and letting them attack us would be useless because they're just gonna shoot arrows at us. So yeah, we just wanna go in here as soon as possible. Uh, so let's go with the, the swordsman right here. Remember, we'll, oh, we're defending. Okay, so we'd probably want to stay on high ground initially and then come down from the high ground. So that when they attack first, we're getting the high ground bonus as well as the uh, the forest bonus here. I'm going to put the scout right here. Yes, sir. So he's not getting the river penalty. Although I don't think that applies when you're being attacked by range units. Alright, so let's go to enter deployment. While they shoot at us, we'll be able to you know, defend from up high. And also we're getting the four forest bonuses as well. All right, lovely. All right, so let's go ahead and hit them with the archers. And then just charge from downhill. They'll also have the, the river penalty here. And the negative eight because they're vulnerable to close combat units, meaning that they're uh, in a very bad position. Let me see how these guys would do. It's nine to 20, nine to 25. Yeah, we're going to attack them first. And we were able to kill them very easily. Because again, they're just they're just archers. Uh, we can attack here, but we would get the river penalty. Okay. Hmm. See how the best way to go about doing this would be. I don't think we'll be able to avoid getting the river penalty. Let me see if they can't come around here. No, they can't. This is the only way down. All right. So it's unfortunate that we'll have to take the river penalty no matter what. So what we we'll want to do is go up on the high ground initially, since we can't attack this turn anyway. We'll bring these guys as well. Oh, they've already moved. Uh, so we'll bring them instead. Yeah, put them right here. And then they have the heavy archers will attack next turn. That's what I wanted for them to attack the scouts out of all the units they could attack. That's the best one for us. So do a little bit of damage down to them. And then we'll have to attack from across the river. Again, get, get in that negative three family. on the river crossing. Now, fortunately, there's no other way to attack them right now. Or bring these guys down, but yeah, there's no way to get to them just yet. But the next turn, we should be able to attack with two units, although it's not going to be necessary. Because I think the archers and, and just these guys here should be able to get the job done. Go! Yeah, they're going to be incredibly weak just after this... Archer Barrage. Uh, in fact, it looks like we destroyed them. All right, beautiful. So we killed those two units. Wasn't too difficult. I was going to wait and, and, and do it till it was optimal timing for us, but because of this this uh, battle here, we have to, to get into, into conflict. Uh, we got to get these units into conflict as soon as we can against the Persians. Uh, so let's get all the other stuff done for the no. turn. It's just her telling us we're at war together. I would Not surprising that that happened. And I'm absolutely okay with it. I don't know where those uh, independent units went. We can't have them raiding behind us, so we will have to send this spearman down here. So yeah, we'll send them down here, and uh, I think that these guys should be enough to get the job done over here. 
You see their 76 strength, but that's before they fight our units, which I do expect them to take some significant damage. Uh, we'll probably build one more unit, guys, just because, you know, we're at war here, so it's it's going to be necessary. I, I wanted to wait for the horses, but yeah, that's not really an option right now. Now, I'm not sure why it's saying, oh, you need two copper for this unit. I was about to say, why does it say we don't have copper? We got copper. Okay, so let's build one more unit. Probably something to support them. Maybe like some, some archers. Yeah, I think we're going to do the archer unit here. It, it is unfortunate we're spending so much of our population on units right now, early on here. But again, this is going to be a very uh, conflict-heavy campaign, I think. Or at least initially, while we secure our borders. Uh, so we're going to do a manual battle. And this deployment is absolutely fine. Yeah, I think this deployment is fine. Uh, so what we'll want to do is move them back some. And let's go into ender deployment. They'll attack us first. They'll shoot with the archers to weaken them. Oh, no, they didn't do that yet. They shot at them. Okay. And then the cab will come up around here. Remember, these guys are not inside the walls, so they're very easy to defeat here. I was thinking the cab would be useless, but yeah, they came up around here. That was something I didn't consider. So they did attack these guys here in the walls. And uh, you can see they didn't do a whole lot of damage. About half of our health, considering the fact that these are really cruddy units and we're facing warriors, that's not bad. If we were to attack them from outside the gates, though, we're just not going to do as well. So I think we should make them fight us. And what I almost want to do, I'd love to switch these two, but that's not really an option. All right, so what we're going to want to do is actually have these guys probably move over here it's not going to save their lives but <laughs> it will force the the horse unit to come over here and yeah we're not going to attack or anything because you can see we'll just do uh we'll do terribly if we're not on defense we're just going to stay on defense guys remember they got to seize control of the flag and they only have three turns to do that though it could end up going into the next turn all right so they attack them from this location they're coming over here uh probably to get so they won't be getting that river penalty and they still haven't destroyed this unit yet. So that's actually pretty good for us. One problem, though, is once they do destroy this unit, on the next turn, they'll destroy him, and then they'll be inside our walls. Or at least one unit will be inside the walls. And so we won't be getting that, that bonus anymore, and thus this unit here is going to be very much exposed. But there's not really anything to do about that. Now you move them out and then move him over here and then they can just go grab that location, which is the flag. So, yeah, we just really need to end our turn and just stay on the defense and do as much damage to these units as possible. You see, I mean, 17 to 26, and he didn't get destroyed, which means this infantry now needs to attack him. Oh, nope, he decided to go after the flag. They, they know what's going on here. They don't have much time left. Okay. Um, so we could attack them uh, in this last round, but we don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and end the round. And because they weren't able to do it in the three turns, it will now continue on to the next turn. All right, so that's good. It gives us more time to get over here, but there's no way to save them. Uh, next turn, we will lose these units here, guys. Uh, we'll lose this, this city. Uh, but we're going to bring our army over there, and we haven't destroyed any units yet, unfortunately. But I think we might end up destroying that one infantry. He's pretty darn weak. Yeah, there's a chance we might destroy him. See, I was hoping to just destroy one unit. We'll see if we're able to do that or not. All right, so these guys here have already moved. So let's go ahead and turn. So we got this spearman. We're going to move him down here. See if we can't find where those independent peoples are. There they are. All right, so I'd really like to get them destroyed next turn. We'll see if that's a possibility or not. They might run. Uh, there's another army of independent peoples here, but these are the more peaceful ones. Or they're at least indifferent. And, uh, yeah, they're not the more aggressive types. So they should hopefully leave us alone. Uh, but, yeah, we do have a lot of independent peoples all around us. Uh, we got this archer constructed. We're going to go ahead and get him moving this way. this way. Now, with these guys here, they might be able to move. They cannot. I was going to say, they might be able to move into this district, in which case we wouldn't want them to do that. Because we're going to lose this district here. This district is attached to the city. There's no way to detach once you're being besieged, of course, to stop you from doing that. So we'll lose both of these two territories here. And thus, we want to keep our guy in his territory so he can finish healing up uh, these two units here. Uh, since we can only heal up in our own territory. So if we moved over here, and then when we lose it, then they wouldn't be able to heal. 
So we'll keep those guys there. And yeah, that's good. That they should be very close to finish healing so that we can engage in this here. Uh, Cairo finish up with that archer. We're going to go ahead and let them construct something for production right now, actually, rather than going after the, the statue of Zeus because, you know, we're at war right now. And I think we're going to do this one. Uh, this would result in us getting the, the five industry from the, the copper. And then all makers quarters will get another plus production. Remember, the pyramid counts as one. So that's one, two, three. I think we have three makers quarters. So that's a total of eight. Yeah, that's eight production. And then plus you get a plus one for the adjacency bonus. So that would only apply to these two here. I think you might get that one as well. But still, that's about 10 production, guys. So I don't think there's any way to get more production than that. Maybe a maker's quarter get you a little bit more, but it takes a lot longer to build. It takes, you know, double the time. So we're just going to do the forge here. Get that done so we can do construction a little bit faster. And this is a follow-up event for that, that dogs and wolves uh, one that we had before. Where we chose to have the, the dogs, uh, you know, work as guard dogs. The public funds spent on training dogs to help protect the shepherds, herds, and flocks has been money well spent. Deaths of livestock has fallen dramatically, and the shepherds intend to keep their new best friends. Uh, so this is going to move us closer towards progress, and we're going to get 10 plus food in Cairo, so they're going to grow quicker. All right, awesome. That's going to be helpful since we're building units and using all our population for that right now. All right, so this is the last round for this battle. They've already attacked us. Their warriors have taken this uh, hex here destroyed the one unit we had so we could just end our round here and let them attack us but you know what's going to happen and we want to look at their army here we're very close to destroying the warriors and what's going to happen is the archers are just going to shoot at them and destroy them so while they're very like unlikely to do anything here guys might as well go out with a bang <laughs> let's let's try attacking them uh, let me see which one we want to attack so we're more likely to do more damage here no matter what, we, we only have five health left, so we're going to lose, you know, we're going to lose the unit when we do this attack. But here you only get a, uh, you know, three. Oh, you know what? That's probably all the health they have, actually. We might actually destroy this unit, so let's do that. There we go. We destroyed each other. All right, so at least we killed a unit. And so they have taken over Thebes, and thus have also taken over this territory here. And so now we're going to try and get over there, uh, you know, next turn. Try and get over there and, and attack them and get our city back. Uh, though a siege is going to you know be more difficult. Uh, what we're going to have to do is, is fight the unit out here somewhere. So that we don't have to fight both the, uh, the army and the uh, militia at the same time. Because this army would not be up to that task. Uh, we will be stronger than them, but just barely. Because uh, we did destroy that one warrior unit. So let's go to end our turn. See what happens on the next turn. And we're going to need to merge these two units so they don't get attacked. And it looks like he did decide to attack us, which was kind of silly. And not entirely sure why he went about doing that. And these guys here might be trying to set up a town here. That's what it looks like. Okay, I'm not psyched about that, but we can try and annex them, I guess. Uh, throw some gold at them. Uh, we need to look at how much gold we have. We might be able to rush that. Uh, so yeah, let's go and do a manual battle here. Again, this should be pretty easy, honestly. So they're right there. That means they're going to have to come up around here. And either way, they're going to be able to get up here, I think, and, and attack us without having to worry about the high ground. So let's just be on our flag. Because, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Okay, they can go up there. Okay, I didn't realize that. We could have stayed in... in a, Got the high ground bonus. It doesn't matter anyways because we d destroyed them, but... Let's go and grab this real quick just to see what it is. And then we need to go back into our territory to heal up. In fact, we want to make sure we're on high ground. So that was helpful. Uh, and I think we should be able to rush this, right? You would think. Yeah, we can go ahead and buy this out, so let's go and do that. And then let's get another unit as well since we have grown. And so we're back up to 11 population. I guess we're going to get a warrior unit. I did want to wait till we had the, the horses, but again, it's it's going to be a couple turns before we get that. So it's fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, get ourselves a warrior unit. Can't race them out. It's going to be 300. It's only one turn anyways. All right, so let's go and get these guys moving. They are fully healed now. Yeah, move right over here. 
in our uh, attempt to attack Thebes. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the archers reinforcing them. Oh, we don't have enough army spots here. Okay, uh, I didn't realize we had so few army spots. That's fine. We'll just have them come up behind them. Uh, though they cannot reinforce, so that's something to consider as well. Yeah, they won't be able to reinforce because we don't have that tech yet. That allows you to do that, which is way back here. Organized warfare. So we can't even send both of these guys into battle right now. Although, do any of these open up the ability to have? No, it doesn't. You'll get texts that open up you know, how many units you can have in an army. And uh, this one does not do that. So yeah, we can only have four units in battle at a time. So what we'll want to do is take the scout out because he sucks. We'll have to do that next turn, and then we'll have the archer join him. That's kind of a bummer we can't do it this turn. So yeah, we'll have to take the scout out and, and then put the archer into it. That's fine. You intrigue me. And Let's again, we're going to demand money if yes, she wants friend. those strategic Say goods. You wish. She's needy. <laughs> Is she losing up here to him? She might be having trouble with all these independent peoples. They've been challenging, that's for sure. All right, so our scouts are freed up now. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and have them start moving down. Help us fight these independent peoples. Hold them off down here while we try and get Thebes back. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and have this guy skip his turn for now. I don't think there's anywhere, wait, anywhere that he can get. No, not really. All right, so it's going to end turn. And... They did set up a city down here. Okay, so what we need to do is throw money at them to try and get uh, them into a favorable uh, relationship with us. Uh, right now, we are being beaten by the Zhao here. Okay, so we probably won't be annexing them, but it makes more sense that she would do that. She's closer. Uh, we're probably going to want to really invest in these guys because they are so close. So yeah, as soon as we can, we'll want to put something into that. Maybe even give influence, in fact, just to get it done because it is so important for us. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that so we can try and get the relations really high. It is a bummer that they, they found, uh, you know, a, a city here. But yeah, we're going to try and annex them, see if we can make that happen. All right, so let's go ahead and take these scouts. Get them moving out so the archers can join them. And then the rest of the army will begin advancing down here. And remember, we want to engage them in battle before we attack the city. Uh, they do have four units again. We might not have destroyed that warrior. I felt like we did. Maybe they built another one already. So yeah, they now have four units. They have 80 total strength. We have 71 total strength. But one of their units is, is Cav and maybe we can do well against them for the spearmen. Uh, our archers aren't great, so that's part of the problem there. So let's go and send, again, these guys can't join. Yeah, we'll just have to keep him here for now so that like he can maybe attack the stragglers or something with help from this guy, this warrior. It would have been better to have more warriors in this. So essentially we want to attack them so we can get the first hit on them. That's something to consider. Uh, how are we doing in our war support right now? So we're sitting at 59 while they're at 71. Okay, so we're still good. We don't have to worry about the war ending uh, due to war support. Let's go and move these guys down. And then with them, uh, we're just going to stay here and just protect our territory. So we're just going to station right here. Let them heal up and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, these guys, yeah, they'll just stay here for now as well. They could go in and move over here. See what they're doing with that district. Could even snatch that from them. Or destroy it with uh, the expectation that maybe we lose this, this war. Uh, which I don't think will happen. I think we'll get it. Uh, so... We're at 10 population here. Let's go ahead and start working on... Could rush out another unit. I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to start working on the Statue of Zeus finally. And so as for where we're going to put this... I think we might just put it right there because it looks cool. could put it right there, but I want it flipped around. And there's no way to, to flip buildings to my knowledge. I don't think you can flip them over. And so you kind of got the back of it facing out. And so let's... Doesn't look good. Yeah, I feel like the best way to do it would be to point it this way. It's right next to the holy site, makes sense. Yeah, so we'll put it right there. So look at the Statue of Zeus building. 
and that's going to take a while. Uh, 21 turns. By building that forge, we actually took off two turns, and the forge took two turns, so it was actually a, a good trade-off. We could uh, take a population unit and move them over to construction to see if that'll speed this up. It'll speed it up by one turn. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that, guys. Let me see if we're moving another one. Yeah, we still got plenty of food. Uh, so this will take off two turns, make it go a little bit faster. Let's go to enter turn. We only have a little bit of time left, guys. It doesn't look like they attacked us. That's interesting. Uh, and where is the ransacking going on? Executing your first ransack is not very friendly, but it's better to be the ransacker than the ransacky. Okay, so it looks like we're being ransacked by these independent peoples over here. Okay. That's fine. Uh, maybe she'll do something for us? Uh, remember, we only have this one scout here, so there's not really anything we could do about that. It would just lose that resource. Uh, they do have a, a scout over here that could be easily destroyed, uh, but we can't move over there. Uh, one turn, or I would, wipe her out. All right, so as you can see, she is uh, positioning herself here for us to attack her. And you know that works out better for us. We want to be the one to be the attacker. So yeah, that works out really well for us, actually. Um, I'm not sure where she's going to be deploying her units. It seems like they're going to be all stuck in one location. But yeah, we're going to go and attack her. Do a manual battle. And then what we're going to want to do is make sure that we have the high ground and, and keep them from gaining the high ground as best as we can. I mean, there's really not any way to, to keep it from them from gaining the high ground at all. I don't think. Yeah, there's really no way to stop that. Because they're just going to move around and gain one of these two locations here. Yeah, uh, so there's no real way to stop that. Now, we could put these guys here, so at least if they, they won't be able to attack one of the archers... I think that might be the best way to do this. And you want to be able to attack with both these units anyways. So yeah, I think this is probably the best setup, the way they did it here. Let me just see if there's any, like, other terrain here. Not really. All right, so let's go and end our deployment. So we're weaker, um, but they have to move all their units out. Now, I don't know who's the one getting hit here. It looks like the top unit is the one getting hit here, the raiders. And the rest will have to move out of this location next turn. And so I'm not sure where, where all they're going to go. Uh, but we're going to try and hit them up hard right on the first turn. And do as much damage as possible. Then we're going to charge down with the spearmen. Who are you know powerful against that horse unit. And then we're going to hit them up with the warriors. And so that puts them in a really shoddy position. They lost their fast unit. And it looks like that was it. Okay, so it didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. We only fought one of the units. Okay, we got a militarist star. We've killed enough units to get that. All right, so another star for us. That means we won't be able to attack again, though. I don't think. No, we can. Okay, now they retreated. All right, so it did let us attack one more turn. That forced their retreat. That's two victories. That's going to drastically tick down their war support. They're down to 68 now compared to our 55, so we're in a much more comparable situation. We could attack with the scout here and they wouldn't be able to retreat, but as you guys can see, we would not do well in such an attack. Uh, so we're not going to do that. Uh, instead, we're going to move these guys down and then have the scouts join them. They're on the run now, guys. They're not in a good position. Let's go and have the scouts join here. And so what we'll probably want to do is split up our armies. Yeah, I think what we're going to want to do is split the armies up. These guys are all injured, so we want them to come into this territory and heal up a bit. We need to get these guys destroyed first, essentially. Uh, so yeah, we'll work on getting that unit destroyed. Uh, these scouts would probably come down here. Yeah, I think we'll have them join up with that unit there. Again, just protecting against these independent peoples down here. We might want to bring them down here. I think this could be the next location that gets attacked by her. So that'd be one option as well as move our units down south. Uh, so where are we at on turns? We're going to do one more turn here, guys. And then we're going to end it. It's a little bit longer video just because we got so much conflict and it's fun. Uh, we were ransacked there and lost the goodies, but that's fine. You can always rebuild them. Uh, use an influence. Uh, we won't do that now, though. Not while we can't defend our territory. 
Uh, they did end up attacking our unit here with somebody. Who'd they attack with? Oh, one Assyrian Raider. Okay. Uh, we're in the forest in a good position here, guys. Uh, good defensive position, so we're going to do a manual battle. I'm not too worried about this. Um, we got the warriors in the front, the scouts in the back here. Uh, this works out nicely for us. So let's go ahead and end our deployment. Let them attack us in the forest. They'll take uh, more damage than us, or maybe not. Yeah, they, we actually took more damage than they did. Uh, so we now have a turn. Uh, we could attack us just because they have more combat strength. Yeah, we only have the 20 combat strength. Okay, uh, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and, and stay here in this location. And what we'd want to do is then move back uh, next turn after they attack us and weaken us again, and then attack with the uh, the scouts instead. Although that wasn't all that bad, honestly. We could probably resist another attack here, I think, and be just fine. Yeah, I bet we could probably resist another attack. But could attempt to attack them here. Let me just see how they would do. They, they, the scouts are so garbage. Yeah, let's just let them attack us. They won't be able to win it. Yeah, this time we've done much closer on the damage there. And let's just see. Do we want to attack them? We have a lot lower combat strength. I would like to get them destroyed, but yeah, this is not the best way to do this. Let's go and end around here. And then the battle will continue in the next round. And it's just a bummer we can't send reinforcements. I'm kind of limited in that fashion. And does that mean that these guys are tied into that battle? Even though they can't reinforce? Yeah, looks like they're tied into the battle. Oh, I didn't know all that. All right, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, I would have destroyed them or attempted to destroy them if I knew that was going to happen. That it was going to lock these guys even though they can't reinforce. So yeah, they're just kind of stuck here, not being able to heal, not being able to fight anybody, not being able to do anything. Maybe that was a wise move of theirs. <laughs> Locking our units in place, the, all the units here. Well, let's actually end our turn so we can try and finish this battle up. Since that's all we're doing here. So they'll attack the swordsmen there. So we'll definitely want to have them retreat now. And we have a new grievance available. Looks like the Huns attacked us in that one location. Not surprising. They smell blood in the water. Uh, so we're going to demand the payment there. We've done quite a bit to them, so not surprising that they're gonna that they attacked us here, and they're gonna try and take over that post. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna retreat. There's really no reason to go into such a uh, you know lopsided battle here, guys. They still have to to actually take the location, which they don't seem terribly interested in doing right now. Uh, they're demanding that we give them that town, which we're not going to. All right, so let's go and open this up. They have attacked us already, and they're pretty weak now. Uh, but rather than attack with this unit who's already pretty weak and take more damage, uh, I think what we'll end up doing is retreating him to here and then letting the scout finish this guy off. Get him some experience as well. It'll take a lot of damage doing that, but what's important is that we win this battle and we get rid of that unit. And most importantly, these guys can now move, uh, which that just was not did not work out well for us. So we still need to heal these guys up. We'll do that in our territory there while we still have it. Not sure why that's blinking white there. Uh, but we're going to want to heal up all these units. Uh, so these guys can still move. So we'll probably want to have them move back to here because they're pretty damaged. They're not going to be all that useful for some, for some time. So let's move them all the way back to there while these guys move into here. We're just going to heal our units up for this turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and have them skip the turn. And we have an event for the Flooded Lands. An unrelenting deluge of rainfall lashes down upon the great city of Cairo and the surrounding lands. If the rains don't stop soon, the banks of the great river that threads through the city will burst, flooding the adjacent quarters. With limited time and resources, the choice of the Stark, what do you do? So we can gamble. Let's leave it to the fate. Maybe the rains will cease. Moving us towards individualism. Chance of terrible consequences. Uh, we can adapt. Moving us towards collectivism and it'll cost 60 gold chance of bad consequences or we can protect which will move us towards progress cost 120 gold with chance of good consequences and that's the one we're going to do we do have a bit of money i was planning on using it for, for other things but it's fine all right so with these guys here they're fully healed now i don't like them just sitting here not doing anything we 
could move into their territory down here. Let me see how we're doing on getting these guys boosted. Uh, we're moving up there. All right, so that's good. Because we're going to want to annex those guys if we can. But yeah, I feel like we just have to stay here to defend against independent peoples that might come in here. Now, these independent peoples might come over here. So we could set up another outpost here, and I think that's what we're going to want to do. I think setting up an outpost here would likely just get attacked by those uh, independent peoples. So let's do it over here. We do have influence. So let's go ahead and go into here and get this outpost set up. Although I probably should have just did it with the scout. So we'll have him come, him come up here and the scout will set up the outpost. All right, so we could set it up here, but I'd prefer to have like districts that would be able to take advantage of you know, the, the bonuses that we get there. And I'd really like to get a location that has a bit more food, but yeah, there's really not, there's not much here. Uh, so that's 27, that's 25, 22, 23, 24, that's not bad. Let's go look at other areas. 20, I mean, there's really no food areas. Are you going to get like a lot of food or anything? Yeah, I think we're going to put it like right over here somewhere. So it's not like on both of the, because we don't even know what that resource is. Might be something really useful. I think we'll put it right here, guys. There's really no good defensive locations. Yeah, there's really no good defensive locations. We'll just put it right here, guys. Get the... The outpost set up just so we don't have to worry about them snatching that from us. I'd also like to get an outpost here and then this here we're just kind of like an independent people's like in the middle of our empire for a little while. We'll either attack them or annex them uh, whichever one ends up being most advantageous for us. Uh, so yeah we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here. We're under assault on all sides. Uh, we lost one of our cities uh, but I think we were in a good position though. Uh, because we have beaten them in multiple battles. We beat them in this battle here, we beat them in this battle here. Uh, so they probably starting to lose war support. Yeah, they're losing war support. They do not own that city. You'll notice it has lines across it. They don't own it. Uh, they have to defeat us in the war to take the city from us. It's still rightfully ours. It's like a paradox game in the sense that they they have to demand it in the, the peace treaty uh, in order to actually take the city. So it's still ours. Uh, so what's going to end up happening is they're, they're not going to get enough war support to win the war to force us out of it. Could always propose a white uh, white piece as well. I don't know if they would accept that or not. Uh, I don't want to do that anyways because I feel like we can win this. Looking at the war support, we're at 60 and about to get another 8. So it's going to put us at 68 and they're going to go down some, down to like 41. And so it, it does look like we are winning this conflict as of right now. We win a couple more battles and they're going to be in a horrible position. So yeah, I think we're actually in a, a decent position to win this conflict. I don't think they'll get Thebes from us. I think we'll get it back. I'm more worried about this province here, uh, that we might end up losing this just because there's so many enemies over here and there's nobody there to, to defend it as of right now. So I'm more worried about that situation than this. Uh, but I think we should win this, this conflict. And what I'd really like to do is then push into their territory and mess their stuff all up. Uh, so it's not just us that got hurt from this conflict. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Extra long episode. Had a lot of conflict in this one. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one. And thanks for watching.